This week's Artist Spotlight is British rock band Naughty Juice. What's up, everybody? I'm Finn McKenty. This is the Punk Rock NBA, and this is a video that I never thought I would make because if you've seen a lot of my other content, you know that I'm usually the one defending new music, and I really do not want to be that old guy complaining about modern music like one of those awful old Facebook memes from 2010. But to be honest, I've had a really hard time getting into a lot of the music over the last few years, and I don't think it's just me getting old. I think something really did change. Specifically, I think we're in the era of what I like to call vibe music. And what I mean by that is that as recently as five or 10 years ago, in pretty much every genre, it was all about the hook. <laughs> That big chorus or riff that gets stuck in your head and you just like can't get it out, whether that's something like, say, My Chemical Romance and Rock or 21 Savage in hip hop. But if you listen to what's trending now, for the most part, you really don't hear those kind of big hooks anymore. Now it's all about mood, aesthetics, and for lack of a better word, vibe over hooks. Whether it's stuff like this in rock. There was traffic, spilled my coffee, crashed my car or this and hip hop. That emphasis on hooks just isn't there anymore. And despite the title of this video, I'm not necessarily saying that new music is bad, but I do think that something is fundamentally different and maybe not necessarily in a better way. And what it comes down to, I think, is one simple thing. Music is no longer the main attraction. It's the soundtrack to something else, whether that's in the background of TikToks, a song in a video game, or maybe just something you have on in the background while you're dicking around on your phone. Because of that, I think we are in the era of vibe music. So the question is, what happened? Why don't we care about hooks the same way as we used to? And does modern music actually suck? Or am I just getting old? Those are the questions that I will try to answer in this video. And also, I want to thank Helix Sleep for sponsoring this video. I've had my Helix mattress for about nine months now, and honestly, I absolutely love it. I really do. It is so much more comfortable than the one we used to have. Everybody's different, and Helix knows that. That's why they made their sleep quiz to match your unique body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. And if you sleep with a partner, you can take the sleep quiz together and find something that's the perfect compromise for both of you. My wife and I took it, and based on our results, Helix matched us with their Dusk Lux mattress. My wife and I are both side sleepers who like more of like a medium mattress. So this is perfect for us and we both sleep way better than we used to. We fall asleep faster. It's literally night and day, no pun intended. And with your Helix Sleep mattress, you get a 100 night sleep trial along with a 10 year warranty and there are financing options including flexible payment plans. And Helix delivers the mattress right to your door for free within the US. It all comes rolled up in a box and it's super easy easy to set up yourself. And unlike other brands, Helix mattresses do not contain any fiberglass, which can be harmful to your health. I honestly love my Helix mattress, and I think you will too. So if you're looking for a new bed, check out Helix Sleep. You can click the link below or go to helixsleep.com slash punk rock to get 20% off your Helix mattress plus two free pillows. Before I talk about why this is happening, first, let me go into a little bit more detail about exactly what I'm talking about. And this is primarily a rock and metal channel, so let me start there. Let's rock. If you go back to when rock was at its peak of popularity in, say, the 2000s, and you go down the list of the big bands, or actually even a lot of the smaller ones, you'll see that they had some just objectively great songs with incredibly strong hooks. Whether that's new metal, like Linkin Park or Limp Bizkit, emo like Paramore and My Chemical Romance, indie bands like Death Cab, or even the post-grunge bands like Nickelback or Three Days Grace, their songs are just timeless. There's a reason that people still love them. And this is not just me getting nostalgic for the 2000s, because even as recently as six or seven years ago, 21 Pilots were selling millions and millions of albums on the back of incredibly catchy singles like Stressed Out.
But since then, the big trends in rock have kind of gone in the opposite direction. For example, the new generation of indie artists like Tame Impala, where if you compare them to say Death Cab or Interpol, they are much more about vibe than hooks. As another example, one of the biggest breakout rock bands in the last decade or so, Greta Van Fleet. If you listen to their newer songs, they're just kind of meandering and don't really go anywhere. Or on the heavier side of things, look at the recent revival of Deftones and Shoegaze in general. I also think Shoegaze, I mean, is going to be a big thing, which again, Shoegaze is just very ambient, you know, a lot of guitar effects -y music. A lot of people call it kind of Deftones Shoegaze. And for anybody who may not be familiar, Shoegaze refers to bands like My Bloody Valentine, who kind of do this wall of sound thing that's defined by just huge, giant, super distorted guitars with a ton of reverb and delay on it to create this just sort of dreamy feel. And almost by definition, it doesn't have any hooks because the entire point of shoegaze is this sort of overall vibe and aesthetics, not some big hooky chorus that's going to get stuck in your head. And you add up all those trends. And to me, the picture is pretty clear, less hooks and more vibe. And like I said earlier, despite the title of this video, I'm not putting any of this stuff down. If you enjoy listening to it, that is honestly all that matters. But from my point of view, it really seems like kind of a miss to walk away from hooks like this. And I could be totally wrong because I remember people saying the same thing in the 90s and 2000s, and maybe it's just my turn to be that guy. But I genuinely have a hard time thinking that we're going to remember these songs in 20 years because honestly, there's just not really a lot to remember. But to be honest, none of that really surprises me because I think rock has been on kind of a downward slide for at least the past 10 years with hip hop driving most of the innovation and honestly just having better songs. And to me, the modern era of hip hop from say like 2012 to 2019 was one of the coolest, most exciting moments in music that I have ever experienced. It was like really fresh and experimental with something new and completely unexpected coming out like every month, but it still produced so many just truly classic songs with these really incredible hooks like Future, 21 Savage, Migos, Lil Yachty, the list goes on. My niggas are savage, ruthless. We got thudders and hundred rounds too. Which is why, honestly, I've been so disappointed with the last few years of hip hop because it feels like the hooks just kind of disappeared when melodic trap took over as the dominant sound. Because I think there really was a shift in style to emphasize vibe over hooks. I mean, if you look at it, a lot of these artists have albums with like 20 plus tracks on them. And I feel like the intended listening experience for those is just to put it on in the background and just kind of let it play while you vibe. As one specific example, which is kind of especially disappointing to me, look at how Lil Uzi Vert changed his sound from EXO Tour Life, which is super catchy and full of hooks. To I Just Wanna Rock, which has no hook and honestly barely even feels like a song to me. It feels like an intro that just sort of never turns into a song and then it's just over. Or compare how Chicago Drill has changed over the years. Back in 2012, Chief Keef basically defined the genre and blew up almost overnight, which I completely understand because like basically every line in every one of those songs is a hook. Everybody remembers where they were when the first time they heard them. Don't like. Everybody remember that shit. Versus now, stuff like this, which is definitely okay, but I think everybody can agree that this just isn't as catchy. Where are the hooks? And with hip hop, I think a big part of the reason for that is very simple. The music doesn't have to be as catchy because I think starting around maybe six or seven years ago, the industry shifted to this new dynamic where now I think a rapper's lifestyle and persona and sort of the lore around them is just as important as their music, if not, honestly, maybe even more important. And maybe the best example of that is King Vaughn. If you're not familiar with him, he was a Chicago drill rapper that was best known for allegedly being involved in as many as maybe 10 or 12 murders and rapping about many shootings and other crimes that he claims to be involved with. For example, this song. 
that wolf is still twitching. He changed some different. I got clips like Mel Gibson. And those lyrics are a reference to the time that his rival Wooski got shot up at a funeral. There were a total of six people who were shot outside the church. It was a pandemonium, a scene of pandemonium right after that happened. The many of those people who were shot were leaving a funeral. And to put it bluntly, I just don't think his music was great. I think it's fine. It's certainly not the worst thing I've ever heard, but I think it's pretty clear that his appeal was largely because he was this alleged murderer rapping about the details of these crimes that he very likely committed. I mean, you hear these lyrics and you're just like, holy shit, I can't believe that he is actually putting this in a song. How could you not pay attention to that, even if the music isn't necessarily great? There's also the rise of Playboy Cardi and all the many, many artists influenced by him, such as Yeet. I need my drugs. I need my love. And in the case of those guys and sort of all their copycats, I think the appeal there is as much about their charisma and aesthetics as it is their music. For example, Yeet always wears those headscarves and has this like whole slang dialect of his own. Pull up now, we finna get busy. Got surround sound inside this tizzy. Now the tizzy also refers to the Tonka. I said it earlier, when you are geeked up, the way that you speak changes and the Tonka turns into a tizzy. And Cardi really is like a legitimately brilliant creative mind. And I do respect both of them for their overall vision and creativity. But if you take away the image and the aesthetics and their personas and all that stuff, I just don't think the songs stand on their own compared to stuff from even a few years ago, like Future or 21 Savage. But again, the songs don't really have to stand on their own because now more than ever, it's not just about the music. It's about the image and the stories behind the music. Of course, that's always been the case ever since the dawn of mass media, but it's more exaggerated now than ever. Rappers now are almost more like reality TV stars than they are musicians. Like how everybody is following Young Thug's Rico trial that's happening right now. And his music is almost like the soundtrack to the reality show of his life. And again, if the artists are happy making this stuff and the fans are happy to listen to it, then ultimately that's all that matters, right? But in my personal opinion, the net result of this sort of emphasis on lore and story and aesthetics has netted out in songs that honestly just aren't as good. And before I go on, I wanna be super clear, I do not want this video to be like old man yells at cloud. Although maybe it already is, I don't know. Really, what I'm trying to do here is just understand what I believe to be this fundamental shift. And also, I want to acknowledge that there is a ton of great music coming out right now that does have great hooks that's not just like vibe music. In particular, I think a lot of female rappers right now are delivering great hooks, like for example, Lotto or Coyla Ray. Bitches getting money all around the world, cause girls is players too. And there's also a ton of great hooks in country, like Morgan Wallen being probably the most obvious example. I can't And also, I don't think it's a bad thing to enjoy something just based on the aesthetics. For example, for me, back in the day when I was a kid growing up listening to punk and thrash metal, like if a band had really cool album art, it made me like their music more. So I think these things are always kind of inherently intertwined and it doesn't somehow delegitimize your taste if you like something because of the aesthetics. But with that being said, what's most interesting to me is that this shift away from hooks and towards vibe is even happening in pop music, which is surprising to me because pop Pop has always been really defined by those hooks, sometimes even these just obnoxiously catchy ones. As a couple examples of what I'm talking about here, the first thing that comes to mind is artists like Carly Rae Jepsen or Miley Cyrus, who built their careers off these really shiny, catchy, upbeat songs like Call Me Maybe and Party in the USA, who are now doing stuff that's more of this like hazy, lo-fi kind of feel that kind of makes you feel like you just woke up at 1 p.m. on a Sunday afternoon after this crazy bender, the birds are chirping and the sun is coming in through the curtains and you're just like, ugh. You're not even willing to look at your party You just jump in the car and the down at the body of blurry those are just two examples, but it's definitely not just them. Check out the Spotify pop playlists and that sound is everywhere. But maybe the clearest example of that is the evolution of Taylor Swift from this high energy pop like Shake It Off or We Are Never Ever Getting Back Together to her newer sound, which is much more chill and indie and well, vibey.
And the song that I just played, which is Cardigan by Taylor Swift, actually illustrates a lot of what I think is going on here. Just like so many other tracks, that song got big on TikTok last year. But what's really interesting is that the part that got big on TikTok isn't the chorus. It's not even some like particular clever lyric. It's just this sort of random vibey part from the bridge. And that part on its own isn't anything super amazing. It was just sort of written as a transition more than anything else. But when you pair that clip from the song with these sort of like really heavy, emotional, touching moments, like you see in this video about her son's open heart surgery, all of a sudden it feels just like incredibly powerful and touching, right? Which brings me to what I think is a huge part of the vibe music trend. Listening to music is no longer a primary activity, meaning that when I was a kid, because I didn't have anything else to do, I would just like sit down in my room and listen to music, maybe like look at the CD and read the liner notes. But those days are gone. Like nobody does that anymore. For the most part, music is now the background of some other activity that has a heavy visual component. Like you have it on while you're playing video games, while you're studying, or it's the background to a TikTok. And like with that Taylor Swift song, it's used more like the score to a movie than a pop song. And if you think about it in that context with music being used to support some sort of visual activity, well, in that context, hooks are actually not important at all. In fact, if anything, they might be distracting. Like you don't necessarily want the score to a movie to be really catchy, right? Because it's just there to set the mood and to support the visuals. And I think that explains a lot of trends. For example, the popularity of lo-fi music in general, or the versions of songs you hear on TikTok that are sped up or slowed down with reverb added. And you'll see some old school fans get upset that TikTok kids aren't listening to the real version of the song. But what you'll quickly realize is that kids don't care what the quote unquote real version is. They only care if what they're listening to sets the right mood when it's used in a TikTok, again, as the background to video. And speaking of TikTok, as a lot of you have probably already thought of, that brings up what might seem like a pretty important counterpoint to everything I'm saying in this video. What I mean is at the same time that vibe music has taken over and hooks are in one sense less important, there's also the opposite trend of people only caring about five or 10 seconds of a song because it has some really catchy lyric or hook and basically ignoring the rest of the track. But I actually think that's just another version of the same big macro trend. Because again, the point here is that they don't actually care about the song. They only care about that one small clip because again, it sets a mood. Because they can use it to say something in the context of a video. And so in this context, it's not really even a song. It's more like, I guess, just audio. It's like a sound effect that is oftentimes used as a punchline to a joke, not a song. And the people using it in those TikToks usually don't intend for it to be anything other than a sound effect or a punchline, which is why somewhat notoriously a song trending on TikTok doesn't necessarily translate into any sort of long-term success for the artist, as we've seen with people like Steve Lacey and tons of others. And so just to bring this all home, does modern music actually suck? Are songs worse now than they were 20, 10, or even five years ago? Well, my personal opinion is that I do think that there are, objectively speaking, less hooks in songs now, but it's not necessarily that modern music sucks. I think it's more that our relationship to music has fundamentally changed, just like it did in the 80s when MTV came along and made visuals such an important part of it, or in the 2000s when millennials discovered all these songs from Guitar Hero. These trends aren't necessarily good or bad, they're just different, but they do have a fundamental effect on how we make and listen to music. And will the era of vibe music last forever? Personally, I hope not, but if it does, I will do my very best not to become the Principal Skinner meme. Am I so out of touch? No, it's the children who are wrong. But before I go, let's check out Naughty Juice. Here is their latest song, Happy. And this one is called Guitar God. And, 
And last but not least, here is Marmite. And if you want to hear more from Naughty Juice, you can check them out on YouTube or Spotify. And there are links to both of those in the description of this video. All right, friends, that does it for this video. As always, let me know what you think in the comments. And I would like to thank everyone who supports me on Patreon, especially those of you who support at the true cult level or above. Patrons get all my podcasts and videos early. There are VIP channels in my Discord that I'm super active in. Sometimes I do giveaways. And there's also a way to have me review your music. So if any of that sounds cool to you, hit the link in the description of this video and I'm going to sign off for now, but I will see you next time.